Good morning, folks. NASA's Earth Observatory here sharing shots of dune movement from the Sahara. Below the larger image, they zoom into the rectangle and track the changing sands over time. I've never actually done that type of comparison before and surprised how easily we see the changes. Folks, I've been talking a bit more about South America the last 10 days. Rain accumulation has statistically deviated north of average and I've been almost a broken record about watching the accumulation totals here. I've advised that you watch the NASA and JAXA measurement mission for landslide and flash flood potential. They outlined this location all weekend and disaster has struck Brazil. The rain finally overcame the ground stability, killing a number of people and destroying a number of homes. Worst here has shifted south to Argentina. Next we come to India. Cyclone hasn't yet made significant impact on the coastline, might even be ready to stall for a brief time before diving west towards the subcontinent. Worst is over in Europe from last week's major storms, just a few rain events left over. Wind maps still showing cold air driving down from the north and still creating a convergence with snow showers in the Gulf states and up the east coast. West Australia got a sprinkle coming, New Zealand's next low is between nations at the moment. Latest ice news, Atlantic side of the Arctic is struggling to get it back as fast as the Pacific side. Antarctica not losing ice as fast as it previously has. Here's the latest ice extent at the Arctic in millions of square miles. Dotted line was last year. So yesterday we took an interplanetary shock from a coronal hole stream. And as with all shocks, we see an increase in cosmic rays just before impact, a decrease as the plasma cloud surrounds our planet and actually acts to block more rays than normal, and then a re-rise after the blocking cloud passes. GOES still has flaring on the floor. The departing group is magnetically separated despite visual intensity complexion. Incomers are likely to continue the Earth facing quiet and solar magnetic shutdown, but it does still hold delta potential behind the triple positive leading umbra. Also excited for the northern hemisphere to get back in the mix after quieting when the solar pole flip became half complete. Hello beastie. Density leveling off but falling speed indicates the shock is indeed over. Wake of the shock did not reproduce storm conditions, but it came quite close as instability returned a few hours later. Either way, done is done and the sensitive meters are showing a good recovery after getting popped in the jaw there. So that's space weather's part of the quake watch factors that have been rising. This 5.9 on the USGS hit between 6.0 and 6.5 on about a dozen human and computer readers. Even more unusual is the continental U.S. having two four-pointers in consecutive days with this many large threes continuing. I'll take unusual locations over destructive magnitude any day. Still, power of the coronal holes is now shifting to the earth-facing openings, especially the one we can't see well down south. If you don't count the downgraded Russian quake from yesterday, this is nine days without a six-pointer, way below average. And even though the coronal field is highly dynamic, we might finally be opening towards Earth today. Also seeing those odd buoy movements in the West Pacific, we've seen those precede an uptick or two. Watch score has hovered between four and seven this month, but if those fields open towards Earth with this power, consider the watch score at eight. Shots of our star to close, eyes open. No fear at 6.40 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.